Hello friends, welcome to study buddy, today we are going to enjoy the first part of our new chapter that is cells. As the name of the chapter suggests, the fundamental unit of life, they are the fundamental unit of life. Cells are the building blocks of life. Just like bricks are the common building material of buildings, cells are too the building blocks, but not of building, it's of living organisms. A cell can be small as well as very large too. That, we will read later. Did you know that some cells can be seen by the naked eyes? Yes, it's true. Cells like hen and ostrich's egg can be seen by the naked eyes. But, many cells can't be seen by the naked eyes. Microscopes are used to view such cells. Let's now look upon the historical background of the cell. Science is based on inventions, researches and discoveries. Everything that is there in science is found by someone. Cells are too found out by someone and he is Robert Hooke. But, it's a truth that a single person can't do everything. There is always the contributions of many people. Same happened in the discovery of cells. One person had discovered a non-living cell, other discovered the living cells, some people discovered the cell organelles and this journey is still continuing. It might be possible that we may be unaware of some unsung characteristics of cells. Well, now zoom into the chapter. Robert Hooke, who was an English scientist, became the first person to discover the dead cells in around 1665. He took the bark of a cork of a tree and placed it under the microscope. He saw something interesting. He saw some honeycomb-like compartments, and, he gave them the name, cells. Our second hero is Anton van Leeuwenhoek, who was a Dutch microscopist. He was the first person to discover the living cells in 1674. If we go out of the box, we find that he just not contributed to cells, but, he had a large number of contributions. He was the first to observe sperm, bacteria and blood cells. This was the basic history of cells. But, there are more stories which are related to cell organelles. Nucleus, which is considered to be the brain of cells, was discovered by Robert Brown in 1831. He was a botanist on Michael Flinders' voyage of discovery to New Holland, where he used to collect a lot of plant samples. He studied them deeply and found the nucleus. J. E. Perkinji was also not left behind. He gave the name to the living substance of a cell, which is protoplasm. The protoplasm can be called cytoplasm. However, they have some minor differences. But, they can be used interchangeably. These were very important scientists and their observations. But, the journey did not stop here. There are many more important names, which you can see in the table along with their contributions. Let's now have a detailed overview on cells. The word cell is derived from the Latin word cellular, which means a little room. They are the structural and functional unit of living organisms. The similar cells unite to form tissues, which further unite to form organ. Organs combine and forms the organ system. This continues and finally, a complete organism is prepared. You can think that in the preparation of a single organism, these much processes are involved. These formation of tissues, organs, etc. do not hold true in the scenario of a unicellular organism. Why? We will discuss it later. Let's now come back to our current topic. The study of cells is termed as cytology, or, cell biology. Some cells are living while some are dead. The point to be noted is that living organisms can also have dead cells. The shape and size of organisms depend upon the functions, they are supposed to perform. Cells are made up of subcellular structures, which we can also say the cell organelles. Cells also have a semi-fluid matrix called cytoplasm. It's their main area of the cellular activity, reactions, etc. Organisms are divided on the basis of the number of cells present in them. They are unicellular and multicellular organisms. Unicellular are those organisms, which are made up of a single cell. A single cell in them carries out all the vital life functions. As, you have already been told that unicellular organisms do not form tissues. 
Let's find the reason behind it. You know that the group of similar cells form tissues. But, unicellular organisms have just a single cell. How can it form a group? Hence, it doesn't form tissues. The examples of unicellular organisms include amoeba, bacteria, paramecium etc. On the other hand, we have multicellular organisms, which are made up of many cells. They have groups of cells. Hence, tissues can be formed in them. They show division of labor. For example, nerve cell is supposed to carry the impulses to brain and spinal cord, whereas, white blood cells fight against certain diseases. The examples of multicellular organisms include plants, animals, etc. The next topic, which arrives here as an obstruction is the cell theory. Let's clear it out. Let's have a quick review on the history of cell theory. Matthias Schlieden, who was a German botanist, found that all plants are made up of cells in 1838. After a year, Theodor Schwann, who was a British zoologist, found that all animals are made up of cells. He further reported that plants have a unique characteristic of presence of the cell wall. On the basis of his discovery, he proposed a hypothesis that animals and plants are composed of cells and its products. Schleden and Schwann formulated a cell theory, but, they could not explain about the formation of new cells. It was Rudolf Fierko who said, Omnicellular e cellular. Its English translation is that all cells arise from the pre-existing cells. Then the cell theory was completed and we have All living organisms are made up of cells and its products, and, all cells arise from the pre-existing cells. This was all for today, we will discuss more in the upcoming videos.